Some have mentioned the possibility, if they try to push through a nominee in a lame duck session, that, that you in this, the House could move to impeach President, President Trump or Attorney General Barr as a way of stalling and preventing the Senate from acting on this nomination. Well, we have our options. We have arrows in our quiver that I'm not about to discuss right now. Uh, but the fact is, we have a big challenge in our country. This president has threatened to not even accept the results of the election uh, with statements that he and his henchmen have made. So uh, right now, uh, our main goal, and I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg would want that to be, would be to protect the integrity of the election as we protect the American people from the coronavirus. And that's, we, I have faith in the American people on this Sunday morning. I hope and pray we have a vaccine and that it will be soon, but it must be safe and efficacious when we do, not one day sooner, not one day later than that. But the fact is, this administration has been a total failure in protecting the health and well-being of the American people, and it has had an impact on our economy. The lives, the livelihood, and the life of our democracy are threatened by this administration. So again, uh, when people say, what can I do? You can vote, you can get out the vote, uh, and you can do so as soon as possible. Ten states, as I said, on Friday uh, started their early for voting the, the day that we lost but, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But to be clear, you're not taking any arrows out of your quiver. You're not ruling anything out. Good morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> the... Uh, we have a responsibility. We take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. We have a responsibility to meet the needs of the American people. Uh, that uh, is, uh, uh, when we weigh the equities, uh, protecting our democracy requires us to use every arrow in our quiver. That was Nancy Pelosi with George Stephanopoulos earlier today on ABC, basically saying she's not taking anything off the table with regards to blocking a Trump appointee to the Supreme Court to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She uses the term she's not going to take any arrows out of the quiver. And that's good to hear. But frankly, I don't know if I trust the Democratic Party leadership to actually get into the trenches and take on Trump and McConnell and the rest of the Republicans. Look, I'm not a supporter of the Republican Party at all, at all, at all. But one thing you can say about them is they fight. They fight dirty, but they fight. They have these values that they have, which are awful values, and they will do whatever it takes, often illegally, they will do whatever it takes to win their fight. They will be hypocritical, they will lie, they will cheat, they will steal, they will do whatever. And I'm not necessarily condoning all of that, but certainly when it comes to doing everything you can within the bounds of politics to achieve your result, I think that's what your supporters want and deserve. And people like Pelosi and Schumer, for most of their career, have never been willing to put the chips down and actually go and fight for their people. So here, I don't know if I really buy her tone. I get why she's not giving any particular, you know, goal or objective right now. You know, Trump hasn't even named the nominee yet. You want to keep your cards close to your chest about what your actual roadmap is. If the Democrats are working on a plan, you don't want to just spout out, we're going to do exactly these things and these steps. Here's our timeline roadmap. I get that. But I feel like she needs to take a stronger tone. She needs to say in at least somewhat explicit terms, here's what we're going to do. Not just everything's on the table, not just every arrow is in the quiver, but that these are some explicit things we want to do. Like note explicitly impeachment. Note these things. Say that this is something we're looking at. You already have the justification to impeach at least Trump again, at least Bill Barr, and of course, Louis DeJoy, the current postmaster. Any one of those people could be impeached for what they've done just in the past couple of months. And so from my perspective, you not only have the ability to do so, but you might even have the responsibility. And one of the arguments is, and of course, you know, how this would all play out could be, could be more complicated, more nuanced, is that an impeachment trial and hearing and these sorts of things takes precedent 
over a Supreme Court nomination. And so that if you impeach DeJoy, it'll go and fill up that slot. That will have to be dispensed before you can have the confirmation hearings and then a potential vote. And that's one of the arguments I've heard some people make. I just don't know if Pelosi's going to do it. It just seems to me that that the Democratic Party leadership, the neoliberal Democrats, don't fight against Republicans as hard as Republicans fight against them. And it's not that I don't think Democrats want to win. I think they want to win elections. They want to win seats. They want to have, you know, the plums of power. But it seems to me that because they are you know, more or less happy with the status quo. They basically tolerate Republican attacks on working class people and marginalized people. Whereas what Democratic voters need, what the people that support the Democratic Party need are militant fighters fighting every bit as hard against the Republicans as the Republicans fight against them. And that's what I liked AOC basically coming out and saying, it's time to pack the courts if they put somebody on to replace Ginsburg. Ed Markey has said the same thing. Bernie Sanders has said the same thing. These are the left-wing Democrats actually talking in stark terms about what needs to be done. I think the the Schumer-Pelosi moderates can take a lesson there. And it has to be said, I don't know if you guys heard in that clip, but, you know, at one point, uh, Stephanopoulos asks a question, and then Pelosi just says, good morning, Sunday morning. And I don't know if she's trailing off or maybe she sees somebody behind the camera and she's greeting them good morning or this is the sort of cognitive decline and dementia issue plaguing Biden and Trump. But it just doesn't inspire confidence in me that Pelosi is ready for the fight of her life. If this is the moment where you need leaders like Pelosi and Schumer to get the job done, I don't know if they have the ability or the will to do it. I'm going to, you know, not give up hope. Call your senators. Keep pushing, protesting. Do everything you can. Don't give up. Don't give up. But also, don't think that the status quo of the Democratic Party has been designed to flourish in a moment like this.